So we're going to have a look at the structure of uh, diamond and of graphite. So I'm just drawing a picture here that might represent uh, what we think a diamond looks like. And if we were to look at the structure of diamond uh, at a really close level, we would see that it is just made of carbon atoms. Lots and lots and lots and lots of carbon atoms. And those carbon atoms are each covalently bonded to six, sorry, to four other carbon atoms arranged in uh, rings of six. So each carbon atom is going to be bonded to four other carbon atoms. So if we look at each carbon atom here, then they've all got four bonds to covalent bonds to other carbon atoms. Now it's quite a difficult structure to draw. So here we can see we've got um, uh, uh, one from a textbook um, and these black dots here represent carbon atoms and these lines between them represent covalent bonds. So I'm just going to go and label uh, on here that this represents a covalent bond. And the key thing is, is if we look at a carbon atom, this one here, it's bonded to four others. If we look at this one, it's bonded to four others. And this one would obviously have another couple that it was bonded to. This one would have three that it was bonded to, and so on and so on. Now, that gives diamond some very specific uh, very, uh, properties uh, which are related to its use. So we would describe this structure as a giant covalent lattice. So giant because it's a large structure which repeats over and over and over again. Covalent because we've got covalent bonds between the carbon atoms and lattice because it's a regularly repeating structure. So giant covalent lattice. And in that we've got lots of very strong covalent bonds. And because we've got lots of very strong covalent bonds, Lots of energy is needed to overcome these, to break or overcome the bonds. As a result of that, diamond has um, two very important properties. It has a very, very high melting point, around about 4,000 degrees Celsius. And it is also very strong, one well, of the hardest, strong and hard, which hardest known substance uh, a naturally occurring substance uh, to, uh, known to man. And again, this is because we've got lots of very strong covalent bonds in the lattice, and these require lots of energy to break. So this is where it relates to the physical properties. And if we just go back and think about the structure of diamond, then we've got carbon atoms, each covalently bonded to four other carbon atoms. So we're going to have a look at another form of carbon now, and that is graphite. Now, graphite is something that you will come across um, on an everyday basis, um, and graphite is present in pencils, pencil leads. Uh, traditionally, uh, many years ago, the pencils would have had lead in them, uh, but now it's baked graphite. So here's a way of representing a pencil and we're looking at the part of the pencil that um, leaves the mark on the page um, and that's graphite so if we were to look at graphite we'd see again that it is made just of carbon atoms but this time the carbon atoms are only bonded to three other carbon atoms. So they are lots of covalent bonds. Again, it's a giant covalent lattice, but each carbon atom is bonded to only three. And that's really important because it means that each carbon atom has got a spare electron. And that's going to become important for the structure in a minute. Now again, it's quite a difficult structure for us to draw. So here's graphite um, uh, from a textbook. And you can see 
that these black dots here represent carbon atoms and if we look at the carbon atoms in the middle then each one of these is bonded to three others this one here one two three so we've got layers and this is really important so we've got layers of carbon atoms and then in between the layers there are weak forces and also in between the layers we've got a spare electron or a delocalized electron so i'm just going to draw this slightly differently now and show that these lines here are representing our layers of graphite or layers of carbon atoms and then i'm going to put an electron in between these layers so we've got delocalized electrons between the layers now so um what we then need to think about is um uh what what this means what the structure means in terms of the uh, properties uh, of graphite so again it is a giant covalent lattice and again we've got lots of very strong covalent bonds as a result of the very strong covalent bonds uh, lots of energy is needed to uh, break them And as a result of that, we're going to have a very high melting point. Not quite as high as a uh, diamond, but still very high. What we then need to think about, though, is what these layers mean. So it's arranged in layers of carbon atoms. And there's two things we need to know about this. So there are weak forces between the layers. Um, and as a result of that, the layers can slide over each other. Meaning that graphite is very slippery. And in fact, when we uh, use a pencil to draw on a piece of paper, we're sliding layers of graphite off uh, of the big stick of graphite and leaving it on the piece of paper. Um, now, as far as uh, another very important property of graphite is that uh, these layers, or in between these layers, there are delocalized electrons. So these are electrons that aren't involved in bonding. They're not stuck to the carbon atoms. Uh, so delocalized electrons between the layers. Um, and they are able to flow through the structure. So these can flow through the structure and carry charge and if they can carry charge therefore graphite can conduct electricity thank you very much